Hi guys, welcome to Classic TV Facts and Trivia. Appreciate you being here. Today's video is on 15 tidbits about the Dick Van Dyke show that you may not know. Let's take a look. Originally starred Carl Reiner, Dick Van Dyke's show was based upon Reiner's experience writing on your show of shows. Starring Sid Caesar, and being that he was also an on-camera performer, he originally planned to star in the show himself. He wrote and starred in the pilot Head of the Family, however, when the series wasn't picked up, he reworked it to star someone else. It could have been Johnny Carson. The two finalists for the role of Rob Petrie were Van Dyke and Johnny Carson. Van Dyke won the role as he coming off the success of Bye Bye Birdie uh, on Broadway. There were two versions of the famous opening credit sequence. For its first season, the Dick Van Dyke show featured still photographs under the opening theme, but the sponsor pressured Reiner to find something more exciting. From there, he developed the now iconic sequence where Rob comes home and trips over an ottoman. Mary Tyler Moore pants were a problem. While she was playing a homemaker as Laura Petrie, character did challenge some TV and societal norms in the early 60s. One of them was the character wore capri pants instead of the dresses everyone, every other TV wife and mother wore at the time. CBS executives complained, but Tyler Moore refused to cave, and she won. It depicted a female comedy writer. In addition to challenging norms to how a wife should be depicted on TV, the Dick Van Dyke show also made progressive headway in its depiction of a woman in the workplace. Actress Rose Marie played comedy writer Sally Rogers based on real-life Sid Caesar writers Selma Diamond and Lucille Callan. Mary Tyler Moore and Rose Marie didn't get along. When the show began, it was intended to focus more heavily on the comedy writing part of Rob's life. As such, Rose Marie had extensive show business experience, was cast believing she was the female lead. However, the writers quickly fell in love with writing for Mary Tyler Moore and gradually gave her more and more of the comedy to perform and unfortunately this created a distance between the two actresses. Procter & Gamble saved the show. Uh, the first season of the Dick Van Dyke show had last lackluster ratings, with CBS nearly canceling it. Uh, but the people at Procter & Gamble loved the show, and they threatened to pull all of its advertising from the network if it was canceled. CBS decided to renew the series and give it a better time slot. Uh, Carl Reiner, Dick Van Dyke, Mary Tyler Moore wanted to end the show after season five. By the conclusion of the fifth and final season, they were all ready to, to move on. The latter two wanted to pursue film work, and Reiner cited uh, the production schedule as his reason since his seasons were over 30 episodes back then. Dick Van Dyke battled alcoholism throughout the show. Uh, he revealed decades after the show's run that he was struggling with alcoholism during the time of the Dick Van Dyke show, and he didn't seek help until 1972. The series finale brought full uh, things full circle. The final episode of the Dick Van Dyke show centered around Rob's book, which is a memoir about his life as a comedy writer that he's trying to get published. While he fails to get publishing deal, Reiner's character decides to make the book into a TV show starring himself as Rob Petrie set an Emmy-winning record. Over the course of its five-year run, the Dick Van Dyke Show won 15 Emmys, more than any other show up to that time. Uh, and the accolades didn't stop there. In 2002, TV Guide uh, included the Dick Van Dyke Show on its 50 greatest TV shows of all time, placing it at number 13. When they updated it in 2013 to include a total of 60 shows, uh, Dick Van Dyke Show made number 20. Two episodes were also included in the magazine's 100 Greatest Episodes of All Time, while the Writers Guild of America placed it at number 14 of the 101 Best Written TV Shows. Uh, it takes place in the same universe as Seinfeld. After the series ended, Reiner's Alan Brady character showed up on an episode of Mad About You, which means the two exist in the same reality. Additionally, Mad About You is a crossover featuring uh, uh, Michael Richards as Kramer from Seinfeld. In 2003, TV Land produced an animated special called The Alan Brady Show with uh, Reiner, Van Dyke, and Rose Marie all doing vocal performances uh, to show what an episode of The Alan Brady Show looked like. And then the following year, CBS produced a uh, special Dick Van Dyke Show revisited with surviving members of the cast. The premise of, Ray, uh, of the Ray Romano hosted special saw Alan Brady calling upon Rob and Sally to write his eulogy before he died. 
The opening theme to Dick Van Dyke's show had catchy instrumental playing over Rob getting home from work and again tripping over the ottoman and never aired with lyrics, yet Van Dyke revealed on several occasions that Maury Amsterdam, uh, who played fellow Alan Brady show writer Maury, uh, Buddy Sorrell, once wrote lyrics to the theme. And they are, so you think that you've got trouble, well, trouble's a bubble. Tell old Mr. Trouble to get lost, and why not hold your head up high and stop crying, start trying, and don't forget to keep your fingers crossed. And when you find the joy of living is loving and giving, you'll be there when the winning dice are tossed. A smile is just a frown that's turned upside down, so smile and that frown will defrost, and don't forget to keep, keep your fingers crossed. Probably a good thing they didn't use that, huh? Uh, once again, my microphone battery's dead, so uh, sorry about the audio if it's not up to standard. Uh, please don't forget about classic rock and country music facts and trivia. Head on over there. Please subscribe. Have a great day. God bless. Be praying for you.